Global Pasts lecture from the Prehistoric Society. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you today uh, Dr. Ana Cecilia Mauricio, Professor of Archaeology at Pontifica Universidad del Peru in Lima. Uh, Ana Cecilia is a Peruvian archaeologist. She studied for her BA in uh, the University in Trujillo in Peru and then went to the University of Maine where she studied a master's in science in quaternary uh, and climate studies and then a PhD. Her PhD looked at early monumentality in uh, Los Morteros in Peru, a site that had previously been thought to be uh, um, a natural mound that her research was able to show was uh, constructed. It's an early uh, instance of monumentality on the northern coast. That research was funded by the National Geographic Society. Uh, she now works as a professor in Lima. Um, it's my particular pleasure to introduce Anase to you all because I dug with Anase when I was an undergraduate student and it's really wonderful to be able to share her wonderful passion for uh, Peruvian archaeology with all of you today. Something quite different from what we do uh, over here in the UK. Um, it is lovely, warm and very hot um, <laughs> at the field sites uh, that Ana Cecilia works at. Her lecture today is called Human Ecodynamics and the Rise of Monumentality in the Central Andes. And without any further ado, I'll hand over and uh, we can settle down and enjoy the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Um, good evening. Here is uh, afternoon in Peru. Um, um, thank you very much for this invitation. It's a pleasure for me to um, have this opportunity to share my research with, with you. Uh, and I just, I, I was telling this before, I just came back from the field uh, yesterday and I, I, I still have that excitement and, and energy. And I hope that it's going to help me to tonight uh, with this uh, presentation. And I hope uh, to be able to communicate well. Uh, I am kind of out of practice with English, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to try my best here. Um, so uh, I believe this is a very different audience for me. So uh, we're talking about uh, the development of monumentality in the Central Andes, particularly from the case of uh, uh, Peru, the coast of Peru. And I think um, it would be better or good to start from uh, the setting, the natural setting. So we are in the in the coast of Peru, which is a, a uh, very dry desert. It, it is one of the driest deserts in the world. It is uh, drier in the uh, it, going south, if you go uh, close to the Atacama Desert. But uh, it is it is a it is a desert. It is dry. Uh, there is no uh, rainfall in most of the of the Peruvian coast uh, and this is because we have two currents two ocean currents uh, one of these is the equatorial current that uh, runs in the uppermost uh, section of the of the coast uh, close to the limit between Peru and Ecuador and is warm water but most of the country most of the coast uh, of the of the country is it is uh, the the Peruvian or Humboldt current, which is a which, which has uh, cool waters, and is an upwelling zone. It is a very rich and productive environment. Uh, um, and but these cool waters uh, also cools the the air, the coastal winds, and and prevent precipitation most of the of the year. And and to the other side, to the to the uh, to the east. We have the Andean mountains, and that act uh, as a barrier for any uh, rainfall from the uh, Atlantic Atlantic system to come to the west, to the west side of the of the of the of the mountain. So we don't have much rainfall, much rain or at all rain at all in some valleys uh, of the coast. So this is. Uh, drier for uh, if you go uh, south southward so there are um, two different um, landscapes uh, because of these different currents in on along the coast so uh, tropical waters with some tropical vegetation in the in the northernmost 
section of the of the coast and then you have uh, the desert and the dry desert with this very productive and very rich ocean but very dry uh, with no um with not rainfall uh, along the coast and the, the, for the most part of the coast but uh, we are a desert but we have water it, we don't have rainfall we don't have rain but we have water because we have coastal rivers that uh, feed on the andean mountains during the rainy season from november to may more or less and then go and run westward to the uh, to the ocean and uh, in their ways they they create oases and life is possible on, on, on the coast of peru because of this of these uh, coastal rivers so um and and in the coastal um the coastal rivers also are the location of most of the of the cities uh in peru in, in the coast of peru another uh, important environment in in the coast of peru are coastal wetlands and coastal lagoons that form uh, close to the ocean and in relation with water uh, groundwater the water table in some in some in some areas are very important and are the most important source of fresh water and are rich environment for um, uh, fish vegetation and birds so are important ecosystem and rich ecosystems uh, for for human survival another in interesting and important ecosystem of the coast of peru are the lomas uh, which are vegetation that fit on the fog that is very uh, um, frequent uh, during winter in, in in the coast of peru mostly in the central coast and in the south coast so we have this uh, environment in the lomas um, from the from lima uh, we are here in the in the center in the central coast to the south and these are also rich environments rich in vegetation and botanical resources and also are an important source of fresh water um, and, and woody vegetation and animals. These uh, lomas in the past uh, were um, larger in extension and, and hosted uh, different kind of fauna, like, uh, for example, deer and even camelids in some, in some, in some, uh, in some parts of the year. So, um, and, and are very rich in, in 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 a have a very rich diversity of of plants uh like for example different or, or wild um species of uh, wild varieties of potato and tomato and even quinoa for example so these are very important environments and um so this is a, a very tight summary of how is the the, the coast of peru and about the the specific topic of this of this talk it is monumentality and monumentality it is related uh, uh, worldwide to the development of uh, complexity level of complexity in some in some societies um, monumentality uh, also it is expressed in the form of temples um, fortress Israeli war uh, and big buildings in some cases and so the study of monumentality with uh, archaeology the opportunity to understand how these uh, societies develop and uh, understand their, their social political economic and environmental context uh, in different regions of the world also monumentality is associated uh, to uh, this uh, kind of complex society that are related to civilization or are called civilization and these are groups of, of people that develop uh, some complex uh, um, ways of organization, as you may know, uh, that develop uh, it, that develops certain characteristics like urban center, organized religion, uh, monumental construction, social stratification, in some cases, uh, state as a, as a way of uh, social organization. So, um, and the, uh, the first monumental buildings the first monumental sites in peru are very different from uh previous period so are very um diagnostic and uh and large in some in some cases 
um, the uh, and these these uh, monumental buildings are uh, started to be uh, built during the pre-ceramic period, and uh, this pre-ceramic period, which is a part of the Peruvian prehistory, started to be recognized uh, in the nineteen in the nineteen forties, thanks to the work of Junius Bert after digging in some uh, coastal sites in the Chicama and the Viru Valley, like Huaca Prieta and Huaca Negra in Viru. And uh, his, his work recognized the existence of population that didn't use ceramic, and, but practice uh, uh, fishing and agriculture. Even with this uh, recognition of a pre-ceramic period in the, in the 1940s, sorry, uh, it was uh, difficult for archaeologists to recognize the, the, all the developments and all the characteristics of pre-ceramic societies. Uh, for example, uh, this, this site, uh, Aspero, in, in the, um, uh, close to the central coast of, of Peru, in the area called the Norte Chico, was first recognized as a ceramic, as a ceramic site uh, that for some reason didn't have any ceramic in the, in the surface. It was very uh, uh, many decades after Junius Bird War that sites like this with monumental buildings like uh, this pyramid and with a, a sunken circular plaza was associated to uh, pre-ceramic population because this kind of, of uh, constructions around the world are related to uh, uh, large population in some cases and populations that use ceramics and populations that uh, practice uh, intensive agriculture, which weren't the characteristics of these of these people in Peru. So, um, based on all this previous work, um, there is this famous um, um, theory by Michael Mosley about the foundation of Andean civilization, the the um, the first um, meaning the first monumental uh, buildings in in Peru that were based on an economy that that was. Uh, uh, pretty much a maritime economy with some development of agriculture, but, but this agriculture was uh, directed to um, the production of industrial, um, industrial products like, uh, for example, cotton and, 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 and gourds for uh, the fabrication of uh, fishing, fishing nets. And so this, this theory, uh, was a very controversial theory because it it it, um, it was uh, um, it was um, um, very different from what uh, we know about this kind of development, this kind of site in other parts of the world. So here in the in the coast of Peru, where the first uh, monumental sites in the Andean region developed. Uh, societies, according to this, to the hypothesis, societies were uh, mostly maritime, and the most important economic resources were came from the ocean. Um, so um, this uh, late pre this these pre-ceramic uh, monumental buildings, the first monumental buildings in the Andes, uh, developed during the late pre-ceramic period, which is a period between uh, 5800 and and 3600 uh, BP. And these are some of the characteristics of this period. There is a rise of the uh, population, um, more people on the coast, uh, larger groups, although no, not uh, very large, uh, and intensification of the use of domestic plants, agricultural practices. There's more evidence of agricultural practices, intensification in the use of maritime resources, intensification in the circulation and production of prestige goods, uh, diversification of burial patterns, uh, the um, appearance of cotton textiles, corporative work, and the construction of monumental buildings. So there are some questions, uh, these are some few questions about uh, early monumental sites in the Central Andes. How and why, uh, for example, how and why monumental architecture, architecture developed? why monumental sites appeared in some regions and not others, because this is not a development that uh, uh, happened uh, along the entire coast of Peru, mostly in the central coast and in the north coast. Um, 
when these buildings appeared, that's, a, that's a, a still a, a question um, um, about this, this site, uh, what they represent and what, they were, what were their functions and their use, who built them and who used them. And uh, this, uh, this building represents the existence of a hierarchy, a state, so what, what the, the, uh, the uh, level of social organization that uh, are, uh, can be associated to these to this monuments, to this site. So these are some questions and, and, uh, uh, about the, 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 the development, the origin of, of uh, monumental uh, sites in, in, in Peru, in the, in the coast of Peru. There are some sites, some um, some sites in in Peru that have been um, related to the beginning of monumentality, like for example this uh, this archaeological site in Nanchok, which is a valley in the north uh, northern part of the Peruvian coast. Uh, it is not the coast actually, but it's a, it's an area between the coast and the highlands, and it's a very rich area. And here there are some um, evidence of artificial mounds dating uh, to 7000 uh, BP, but with no major construction. Uh, this, um, most of the, the, the discussion about the uh, uh, early monumentality in the Central Andes come from this area called the Norte Chico, which is a part of the, the, the coast of Peru. There is just two hours north of Lima. And these are uh, four small valleys. And in this area, in the Norte Chico, uh, there, there were uh, tens of sites with monumental architecture that developed and were constructed at almost the same period. These are, this is uh, a map of the location and the name, with the names of some of the sites. And these sites share a architectural tradition. They are very similar in, in, in design. Some of these sites are, for example, uh, this Aspero in the Super Valley, with, uh, which uh, has a uh, pyramid uh, made of platforms which, uh, with uh, uh, sunken circular plazas. This is a very typical pattern, architectural pattern from the Norte Chico. You, you can see here a picture of this, of this uh, construction. A, a, a pyramid made of platform with a central staircase that goes directly to a circular plaza that is sunken. Um, the most important site in, or uh, the most famous perhaps site in, in this area is Caral, uh, which has the, um, perhaps the, the larger, uh, the largest uh, pyramid here with the largest plazas also, and um, it, it, it has the same pattern. Pyramids with central staircases, some construction on top of this pyramid, on some pyramids, and plazas, rank and circular plazas. Uh, uh, for example, this is uh, one of the, one of the um, um, this is the biggest actually building in, in this site, the Great Pyramid. You can see the, the architecture, very complex, very large uh, um, construction, and also the presence of these large standing stones, uh, locally called huancas, that are related to some astronomical observations or also um, the worship of the ancestors. So it, it is a, a. These are some of the ideas about the, the presence of these standing stones, although there is a debate still about the meaning of these stones but it's very characteristic of all these sites in the Norte Chico and some other sites in, in other areas uh, of the coast uh, uh, from this uh, late pre-ceramic period. This is another site, Bichama, and you can see the pyramid with uh, associated in this case with two sunken uh, circular plazas. The Fortaleza Valley in the same area with uh, this large building with these large standing stones and pyramids, the same pattern. This is Bandurria in the Waura Valley, still the same region, the Norte Chico, and the same architectural pattern. And so we have uh, a, a basically a more public area um, related to the, the plazas and the open, open air areas 
and then some more private and more restricted areas on top of some pyramids um, in, in some of this plaza. Um, there has been some fundings of uh, uh, musical instruments, some burials, um, and species, uh, faunal species and botanical species from different regions, and, and also some um, human remains in some parts of the, in some areas in the upper part of the, of the pyramid. Um, um, this pattern is very diagnostic and is very impressive and is very large and, and is very di diagnostic, as I, I said, of this region, the north of Chico. And uh, part of the part of the pattern include the the use of this uh, uh, of this bag made of fiber, um, organic fiber, with uh, some stones inside um, that to were called shikras, and these are part of the field in 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 these buildings. It's a very it's a very common practice. It's a very common architectural technique. And these chikras are, are have been inter, interpreted as uh, um, part of a system of uh, construction, uh, perhaps related to the uh, to how these people account for the participation of the community in the construction of of these buildings. Um, it, it isn't clear why they use this. Uh, perhaps it was a more um, the explanation is more related to structural uh, reasons, but this is a common thing uh, among the, the buildings in the in the north of Chico. Um, uh, about the chronology, we have uh, that these buildings are um, were constructed, were built in a period between uh, forty five hundred and and 3,000 uh, calibrated BP. Most of them share the same the same uh, chronology. So it is a a period uh, with uh, a very um, high development of this uh, high uh, construction um, um, high. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's a period with. Uh, um, very intense construction activities and and communal activities related to these uh, buildings that uh, are also all the time being remodeled. Um, and because of, of these uh, very impressive uh, sites in the north of Chico, most of the discussion about the, the development of, uh, of um, these sites, monumental sites, come from this area. There is in, in the north of Chico uh, also there are uh, these uh, small figurines, clay figurines, clay, clay sculptures uh, that have been um, associated with the presence of leadership or social stratification. And also, uh, and, and these are very common, and, and these figurines, these uh, small statues are, are um, very common in, in several. Uh, of these monumental sites in the north of Chico. Um, it, the uh, research, researchers uh, from, from the north of Chico sites are inter interpreting these, these uh, figurines as evidence of uh, uh, high status people in this, in this, in this, um, in this site, in these societies. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a proof of social stratification. And also uh, some of these burials um, uh, that have been found in this site that are very, uh, in, in some cases are very different from the common burials, human burials from this period, because they have some ornaments, uh, musical instruments, beads, and, 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 and objects from other regions, like for example, spondylus that come from from the, uh, the, the warm ocean, it's a, it's a mollusk that come from the warm ocean between Ecuador and Peru on the, on the north coast. Uh, these, uh, these burials with uh, this um, high number of grave boots have been associated to uh, the, the, uh, the presence of elite. And there are evidence of these burials with uh, these very impressive grave boots and, 
and decorated the styles and products that come from different regions in, in other areas. Like for example, this, this site La Galgada in Ancash, this is a this is a site different from the from the Norte Chico area. Uh, and this is another uh, very um, um, different uh, human burial. This is Huacaprieta uh, in the Chicama Valley, the north coast of, uh, of Peru. Uh, this is a burial of a, of a woman that uh, was uh, that had uh, this uh, decorated wood, uh, decorated words, and 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 some other uh, stuff, uh, prestige woods in 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 this in this burial and also uh, there is this question about how and why these people have this this object in 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 their burials and during this time also appeared the first as i said the first uh, decorated cotton textile the, the, with early iconography like for example these these uh, images uh, that i'm showing now that come from uh, textiles in different sites like Boca Prieta, La Galgada in Asia, in the North Coast and the Central Coast. So um, most of the discussion, as I said, is being is, is, is coming from the from the Norte Chico, and the Norte Chico is being interpreted like as a center of development, as a center of social complexity that uh, um, um, that was the most important center during this the most important area the most complex uh, social area during this time in the central andes uh, but there is new evidence that come from different different parts of the coast uh, mostly from the north coast that uh, are uh, giving us some insight uh, some uh, different perspectives also about the development of, uh, of these uh, uh, early monumental sites and 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 in some cases, uh, uh, question the evidence and the interpretation of uh, early monumental sites in that uh, from the Norte Chico. So, new evidence and new research come from the site, for example, of Huaca Prieta in the Chicama Valley, and uh, this site was excavated by Julius Bert in the 1940s and, and re-excavated by Tom Dillage and his team. Uh, in 2012 and the following year, and so they they uh, have been reinterpreted the evidence uh, uh, found by Junius Bert, uh, who interpreted he, he Junius Bert found a stone architecture and he interpreted this architecture as domestic architecture for a population of fishermen, and and new this new research is is interpreting this this structure as uh, funerary chambers and ceremonial chambers, and this new research has uh, uh, has found evidence of uh, uh, public spaces, like for example, a, a sunken circular plaza dating before 5000 BP in this area. And another evidence comes from the Huaca Negra, the Guanape uh, site in the Viru Valley, south of the Chicama Valley, south of the Huaca Prieta site. And here there is evidence of monumental construction around uh, in 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 this mount around uh, 4,000 calibrated BP, and there is another evidence from the Sechin Bajo site in the Casma Valley, south of the of the uh, the Viru Valley, uh, with uh, monumental architecture of the late pre-ceramic period dating between uh, 5,500 and 40,000 BP associated with platform and sunken circular plaza. And um, the evidence from the Chao Valley where I work is, is, is also new, it's also giving a different perspective about the development of this, uh, this early monumental site. Um, the Chao Valley where I work is a small valley on the north coast of Peru, uh, between the Viru Valley uh, to the north and the Santa Valley to the south. And and here is the location of the Chao Valley on the north coast of Peru. Uh, the Chao Valley is formed by two rivers, actually, the Choroval uh, River and the Huamanzana River. And this is a very irregular river. Um, it is uh, one of the uh, driest uh, and more irregular rivers on the coast of Peru. Um, 
there is more fresh water in the in the water table as groundwater than uh, water uh, running on the surface. And agriculture here was very limited um, and to some part of the of the valley because of this uh, of this lack of of water most of the year and um, it was actually part of the Viru Valley for most of uh, its history, but this is a very different configuration from the, from the um, uh, pre-Hispanic times. Um, but, um, and also this, this valley has been um, uh, object of little archaeological research until the 1970s. Um, I'm going to talk about this, this, uh, this area in the, in the Chao Valley, which is a kind of a remote area, very different from the rest of the valley. We are in the south part, in the, the lower valley, but in the, in the south margin, um, pretty much nine, nine kilometers from, the, from the, uh, the town of Chao. And it has, very, um, it has some very special characteristics. Uh, in terms of uh, geomorphology, because it is a, a paleo embayment, it, it is a dry embayment. Um, it is a, a very arid area, no population, no vegetation. Um, here you can see uh, a, the presence of a paleo shoreline and a dry embayment, um, meaning that the, the ocean was closer to this, uh, this shoreline, this paleo shoreline, um, uh, many years ago thousands of years ago. And so this is uh, the landscape, very arid environment, it, alluvial deposits on, on this alluvial plain, um, no population, no vegetation, no animals around, no a source of fresh water close there. The river is seven kilometers north and the ocean is four kilometers west. And this is the landscape, as I was saying, the, on, the only human presence here is these uh, chicken farms that are in the middle of the archeological area. And the other human presence are archeologists that come once a year to excavate this site. Um, this area was discovered by um, a, a team of archeologists uh, led by um, Mercedes Cárdenas, uh, Dr. Mercedes Cárdenas from the Universidad Católica, where I work now, um, and, and this project, this research uh, carried out in this valley, discovered most of the sites, uh, 190 archaeological sites in this area, excavated 20 of them, and, and, and had uh, radiocarbon uh, dates for 26 of them. Um, in, the, in the particular area of, of uh, where I work, that is called Pampa de la Salina, uh, as you can see here in this map on the on the left, um, this this team, this research led by Mercedes Cárdenas discovered more than 20 archaeological sites. More most of them apparently pre-ceramic, and and you can see here in this in this in this uh, satellite photo in this map, the number are archaeological sites in this area and you see you can see the, the paleo shoreline and the and the paleo embayment the dry embayment and the pacific ocean to the west um, perhaps the most uh, uh, known of this site is uh, salinas de chao which is the largest site in the area with monumental architecture plazas square plazas bank and circular plazas and many construction and platforms um, in um, that are um, uh, along the side of this mountain, but uh, one of uh, one of these sites, one of these other sites in this area, is Los Morteros, excavated by Mercedes Cárdenas in the 1976. And here uh, she found evidence of human burials and some uh, domestic, what what she called domestic remains, uh, maritime uh, remains, marine remains fish, um, uh, fishing, uh, fishing weights, um, fish hooks, um, and things like that. And, and, and they interpreted this, this, uh, this mound 
as a natural feature that was used for pre-ceramic population as a cemetery. Um, this is the location of morteros in, the, in, in this area in Pampa de las Salinas, it's like in the middle of this uh, paleo shoreline, uh, right in the middle of this paleo shoreline. It is a, uh, it is a mount, or a mount um, like archaeological site. We have been excavated this site since 2012. Our objective here was to understand the human presence during the pre-ceramic here and understand uh, um, how was the formation of this, of this mount, uh, if, if it was a natural feature or an artificial construction. And we've been digging in this site and in other sites of the Pampa de las Salinas since then, since 2012. And, and our research, um, it's been always a research uh, um, a, a integrated, that integrate, integrated uh, the natural context, the landscape, and also the cultural context of Los Morteros. That's why we've been excavating different sites in this area, trying to understand the relationship between them and, and the relationship uh, of this site uh, to the development of monumentality in this area. So this is the mount, and we've been uh, uh, finding uh, proofs of uh, construction, uh, proof of, that this mount is artificial since then, and we've been able to find different phases of occupation and construction here. And so uh, in, we've been excavating in different areas in, uh, in this mount, and we have um, divided the, the, the human occupation of this mountain into com in two components. The first component is, is uh, pretty much uh, pre-monumental, pre-architecture, and, and the second component is related to uh, human constructions uh, of monumental architecture of adobe, um, mud bricks, uh, uh, and um, stone are uh, stone monumental architecture so um the first monumental uh, the, the first uh, phase of monumental construction here in this mount is related to adobe architecture of uh, mud brick architecture uh with with this, this date this is it's pretty early and it's been found in the in the northern section of the mount adobe architecture in the form of rectangular rooms uh, made in, uh, mostly of adobes or mud bricks with walls that in some part reach uh, two meters high uh, with uh, uh, very thick clay floors and um, some features that have that, uh, some features that have helped us to date this uh, architecture because because of the function of these structures, we haven't found any direct evidence to, um, to date them. But we found, uh, in some years ago, we found uh, some, um, a offering related to the closure, uh, to the end of the use of this architecture. And part of this offering has, uh, part of this, including in this offering were some uh, human bodies, mostly children, between seven and, and 10 years old. And in some cases, some of these bodies were uh, exposed to fire, but we used uh, the um, um, elements of uh, the, this, uh, these uh, burials, like for example, textiles and, 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 and other um, organic pieces to date them. And this uh, helped us to understand the chronology of this uh, architecture. Another, um, another um, uh, ceremonial monumental architecture for this site is, is related to stone architecture, stone and clay architecture like this one, with this uh, uh, very characteristic uh, feature of this site, like this large standing stone in, in place in the middle of these rooms. Um, and as I said before, we also found evidence of human presence before 
the development of the construction of this uh, complex architecture, this adobe or mud brick architecture and the stone architecture, which is the, the component one um, that predates the oldest date that we have for the uh, component uh, two, which is uh, 5,700 calibrated years uh, BP. And these are uh, several meters, at least uh, uh, three meters of cultural deposit. Uh, these are photos of these uh, these uh, these faces, these components, and the photo in the the picture in the in the in the to the to the right is is another evidence that we found uh, very recently of these uh, this very these uh, earlier deposits in the mount in in another section of the of the of the north part of this of this site. Um, also, there is a very um, um, uh, um, evidence, a very um, abundant evidence of uh, marine uh, marine products, marine species, the fish, uh, mollusks, sea lion, uh, even sharks, and coastal birds that are the, the, the most common uh, remains in this in this site. And uh, the entire, all the protein in this site and in other areas in, in this, in Pampa de las Salinas come from the ocean. Uh, we also have evidence in, 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 in the form of mac micro remains uh, of other, other um, species, botanical species, like for example, some fruits, like uh, lucuma, uh, guayaba, and maize. And, and also uh, cotton. Cotton is very abundant in this, in this, uh, in this site. As you can see, the cotton sits on, on, in this picture. And these are pictures of the, these uh, uh, marine remains. Mollusks, different, a, a wide variety of mollusks, different species of fish, small fish, large fish, even, even sharks. And, um, and uh, uh, there is a, uh, um, an abundance of uh, sea lion bones or and marine mammal bones in general, but particularly sea lion. Um, and our research here uh, in the beginning was focused on morteros, but we also uh, um, extended our research to this other site. More than 20 sites around Los Morteros uh, forced us to understand the site within its cultural context. And we excavated other sites, like for example, Los Pescadores, mostly uh, in the beginning to date them, to have a better chronology of all these sites, to uh, using uh, short life uh, botanical remains, like for example, seeds or, or, or um, textiles. So we excavated uh, Los Pescadores, which is another site here. And you can see the location of this site in the, in the in this map and in, in to the to the left and also uh, more recently we've been excavating uh, piedras negras v piedras negras b is uh, it's a, a site just north of morteros and this, there is this uh, there is evidence of monumental um, a construction here but evidence of uh, different phases of occupation, including late occupation related to the exploitation of uh, the uh, marine resources uh, nearby. And uh, we've been uh, digging in this, in this site uh, this season. And based on this excavation and previous excavation, we, we can say that most of the sites here in the alluvial plain uh, of, this, of this area are buried uh, below thick layers of sand and gravel, and for for from 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 the mountains that are uh, close to these uh, sites, and what we see on the surface is very different what uh, from the original architecture and the monumental architecture of the late pre-ceramic period. Uh, we found evidence of a large construction of monumental characteristic, very monumental characteristics, uh, large. Um, rooms with a very complex architecture, uh, walls that are uh, one meter wide and large spaces and different phases of construction and remodeling. 
uh, we ha we've been digging in this site, Salinas de Chao, also in 2019, and there's a location of, of Salinas de, de Chao. And, and our, our objective was to uh, get a better chronology, radiocarbon chronology also, and, and our excavation in three different sectors of this site didn't, didn't find um, um, the steady levels, didn't, didn't reach the steady levels, but we found uh, a very complex uh, um, construction phases and occupation of this site and a very large uh, monumental construction in different parts of this site. Like for example, this in this area, in, in this excavation unit, we found this very large uh, stone uh, room. We found just this corner that was uh, partially dismantled and filled with a uh, several um, 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 meters of stone and the the dimension of this of these uh, spaces these rooms these platforms indicate a very large and uh, very uh, and, and a display of resources and human resources and economic resources for the construction of these areas um, also in this in in Pampa y las Salinas there are these archaeological features geoglyphs that are very very particular, like uh, for example, this one that is it was called La Cruz del Sur, also discovered by Mercedes Cárdenas and her team, and it is called like that because of the similarity with the the constellation, the crux, and is um, th these are like circular marks that are inside these large square rooms with entrance and some internal divisions. It's very different from other kind of other geoglyphs, other kinds of geoglyphs that are in in the in the Andean region. And they 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 uh, these archaeologists uh, put it this name because of the, the constellation. And there are other uh, other geoglyphs with uh, similar characteristics. Um, remember that what you see is is a a very um, it's a buried uh, feature, it's a buried archaeological site. We are just seeing the remains, uh, the most superficial uh, remains, and it's the same thing. And, and we are trying to understand if these are like uh, um, replicate, replicating the, uh, some constellations, not as, as an observatory, as an astronomical observatory, but replicating, uh, trying to copy some constellations. And this is another area. This is the largest one of these uh, geoglyphs. And this is a map that we've been able to, to have uh, uh, based on aerial photography. And these are the, the, the these marks, circular marks, and inside these large rooms. And you can see uh, here um, how large can be, uh, how big, how big can be these marks. And some, and some of these rooms have entrance, meaning that uh, people were supposed to uh, get inside these areas. Um, and so everything here uh, talks about a, a um, complex, a, an archaeological complex, a pre-ceramic uh, uh, ceremonial uh, complex, a pre-ceramic ceremonial landscape that uh, developed in Pampa de las Salinas, starting with morteros, but, but uh, uh, reaching is its uh, uh, popularity uh, between uh, or around 4000 BP or even even before, as uh, our new research is indicating. So uh, for us, Morteros is, is the earliest and the, the beginning of uh, the construction of this ceremonial um, communal landscape. Uh, it has uh, the evidence of the earliest uh, monumental architecture here. We still are understanding why there is this gap uh, between morteros and these other sites that uh, have uh, these other sites uh, have their earliest dates around uh, uh, 4,500 BP. So there is like a, um, a 500 years, and we don't know exactly what happened in this area. Um, by 3,000 BP, this area was progressively abandoned. 
and and in during this time around this this time appeared this uh, shell mill and because people were coming to this area to uh, ex ex uh, to exploit these resources um, and also exploit a local salina the salt flood that appeared um, uh, progressively in this area and los morteros which means the mortars is because of the the abundance of stone mortars on the surface of of the site um, we also um, uh, try to understand the environmental transformation of this area because it, now it is not very uh, friendly for human occupation so we um, uh, carried out some uh, research in in the in the paleo embayment trying to understand the estratigraphy and trying to understand what what happened in this area and um, well our research is indicating that uh, um, there were some uh, features that made this area very different uh, a, a very different ecosystem like for example coastal lagoons and wetlands close to the 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 paleo shoreline the ocean wasn't wasn't uh, uh, wasn't close to the site. The ocean was uh, already retired, and and it, this area um, got progressively drier with more sand in this in this uh, in this part, and getting um, and, and got uh, its uh, its current um, form, its current appearance. Um, apparently, because there were um, large large amounts of aeolian deposits sand that the ocean couldn't take in uh, couldn't take back back to the to the ocean with the current and and um, this transformation started apparently even before human presence in this in this area but uh, we've been we've been able to uh, have some chronology of the the uh, retirement of the ocean uh, because we yes, uh, we found some um, some of these shell middens inside of the embayment and we dated them and um, so we we know now that the ocean wasn't in, in the in the central part of this embayment by uh, 3000 BP and that's the 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 end of the human presence in this in this area and now we have a new radiocarbon chronology for Pampaela Salinas uh, which uh, uh, go between 6000 and 3000 bp um, uh, we are um, we are basing this um, this chronology is based on um, very uh, secure uh, elements like for example as i said seeds and and other short life uh, um, organic remains so we are we are avoiding for example charcoal and um, this um, this chronology is also um, the, the chronology of the human present here is also related to uh, some important uh, climatic uh, um, events and uh, related uh, mostly with El Nino and the uh, the the presence of El Nino uh, during the pre-ceramic and transformation and transitions in the in the in the behavior of El Nino. For example, uh, there is the, uh, there is uh, white evidence of uh, uh, this period of silence uh, in, um, of El Nino on the coast of Peru between uh, 9,000 to 6,000 BP, and after then, the Nino um, was reactivated uh, for some reason, and uh, and we are associating this reactivation of El Nino activity that wasn't uh, like like El Nino function in this day. It was, uh, it was um, um, softer, if you will, uh, but we are uh, relating this uh, reactivation of El Nino with the, uh, um, um, with the, um, some of these settlements on the coast uh, being more permanent and the creation of these coastal environments that were very productive for for this population like coastal lagoons and wetlands and we have another important transformation in the behavior of el nino around uh, 4000 3000 bp uh, that increases uh, its activity it was more frequent and more intense 
and we have also the abandonment of this area by by then and also uh, the adobes of morteros the adobe architecture of morteros is related to um, alluvial deposits um, um, that uh, we've been able to find uh, a um, a relationship between the, the the deposits created by el nino in the in the lower part of the of the of the rivers of the the Chao river and the coastal um, um, the coastal valleys with the deposits that uh, are the the base of these adobes so we are relating the the these early adobes the very early adobes that are older than 5000 years with the nino activity and this probably um, it can be uh, a way to understand why these uh, these um, these spaces were starting to be built um, in in this area. Um, and uh, well, um, these are some thoughts about uh, about the research about the pre ceramic uh, uh, the, the pre ceramic monumental architecture. So we have the, the a human presence in the, in Pampa de las Salinas in the Chao Valley. It's a, it's a long human presence um, that uh, um, is closely related with the local environment. Um, we have also a apparently a local development of monumental architecture in, in, in complex social organizations. Uh, it doesn't appear. It doesn't seem to us that we are uh, that in the Chao Valley people were copying uh, developments from other regions. Uh, this appears to be a, a phenomenon, a social phenomenon, a social development that happened in different areas of the of, of the coast of Peru, uh, following a, a very particular local history, but also um, creating spaces, communal spaces. There is a very um, a particular um, relation uh, of these structures of this building with ceremonial activities. We're still finding out how these different sites relate, but uh, the chronology is, is relating them. The radiocarbon chronology relates them. But we are still finding, finding uh, exactly how they, these different sites relate and function with, with, uh, uh, with each other. Um, we are still missing the perspective from the population. We haven't found in, yet any evidence of a local population living there. Probably people were living around. Uh, we're still missing that. Uh, we haven't found any, any site uh, with domestic occupation, even, that, even when we have explored around in, in the valley. Uh, but um, modern activities probably have destroyed the, this, this evidence. Uh, and so uh, we have to um, um, uh, take that into account. We are not, uh, we don't, we, we still uh, need to understand how people were related to this site. Um, and, and, and still understand how the site uh, developed because we're seeing just the, the last part of the, of the history. We are seeing the site like frozen in time. Um, I don't know if I, I have uh, some uh, some time or it is uh, it is over. But I, I like to show some uh, other things that are not uh, uh, related to to uh, the uh, ar archaeological um, findings. But uh, um, this research has been growing. Uh, with the time. We are a multidisciplinary research. We work with different um, uh, colleagues from different areas of expertise to understand this, this, uh, uh, the complexity of the human occupation here. Uh, we uh, are a, a multidisciplinary uh, research team with uh, people from the engineering department of Catholica physics and also archaeology and geoarchaeology from the University of Maine. And um, uh, we, we also are a uh, field school um, uh, for undergraduate students, uh, Peruvian students from different universities that come to excavate with us. Some of them do their, their uh, licenciatura, um, uh, how, how do you say, uh, degree, uh, uh, thesis, uh, 
um, about these uh, these uh, excavations, and they participate in different different stages of the research, so the excavation, laboratory, and also some uh, communal activities that we do. Like for example, this project, this uh, this is a educational project, ed education for conservation that we uh, uh, do. Uh, working with uh, schools in the child district elementary schools um, and developing workshops for for this uh, this kit uh, discussing archaeological heritage and and how we understand archaeological heritage the importance of archaeological heritage and and we've been creating some uh, educational materials like for example this for the workshop that we do in these schools and also like this uh, this, this comic that is based on, on our findings in, in Pampa de las Salinas um, and, and some seminars, online seminars or workshops for, for the teachers. And uh, yeah, we are, we are trying to um, in, in, um, get the participation of the local community more because uh, we, we um, not, not not only because we want to communicate our our results, but also we want them to be involved in in, in what happened with this this archaeological sites and their archaeological heritage more, and be the the um, the the real the real um, um, como se dice? Uh, uh, the, the real focus of this of this of this work. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. This is this. Thanks to my my team and thanks for this invitation. Oh wow! What a fantastic talk, and with so many beautiful pictures, making us hugely jealous of your uh -huh. amazing field sites and wonderful landscapes that you get to work in. Um, if people have questions that they would like to ask, if you want to pop them in the Q&A or in the chat, um, then that would be great. And uh, I'm gonna um, do the cheeky thing and uh, ask uh, Anna Cecilia a question um, to get us going. Um, you were talking about the gap between Los Monteros and the kind of the later things that come after it. And you said it was around about 500 years. If you kind of had to speculate about what is happening in that gap, what do you think is going on? Well, I think that uh, we need more excavation because, <laughs> because for example, um, this, uh, the, the uh, largest site in the area, uh, Las Salinas de Chao, the site with these large plazas, for example, has been excavated in the 80s and then a couple of years ago, but we haven't reached the the earliest deposit yet. I have uh, dates uh, around uh, 4200 BP uh, for the most uh, complex part of the ceremonial architecture. And but we have evidence that there are other deposits, and we need to reach that. And I think it's a matter of. Uh, uh, how much excavation we have so far, and because of the complexity of the constructions here, being a ceremonial, a, a monumental site like this is very complex, it's very complicated, and it's very difficult to reach the, the, the bottom of the, the oldest deposits. So uh, probably it's that. And, and um, but, uh, op or probably, there was an abandonment of the area, uh, but even for that possibility, we need more evidence of, of uh, a, a um, evidence from, from this archaeological site. Brilliant. So we've got a few questions in the Q&A. So John Sheshki asks, do you have a total population estimate for each geographic area over time? So how many people do we think were living there? And uh, I don't know exactly this this calculation of population are very tricky, very difficult always because um, uh, we are looking at the final picture of of everything there, like uh, the final development of the total development of the site. We don't know exactly uh, yet uh, how these sites were used, if they grew through time 
like in or they they grew or they were built uh, like a, a whole thing and function as a whole thing all the time or by part by 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 sections for example we're guessing if if these plazas are functioning for different activities or perhaps are different groups of people building their, their plazas this is a very big communal space communal um, complex so perhaps different communities come to this area and they were able to build different different spaces for their local so their, their very particular activities depending on their interests and depending on the on their resources so that's a possibility um, because um, it, the complexity of this uh, architecture and the the chronology uh, gives us still all these possibilities to, to so um but when you see the, the the site the dimension of the site you imagine a large population yes. but uh, um if you have a large population also you have to think about a, a more complex level of social organization to manage or and to organize this this population and um and and but um, we have, for example, the, we, we are uh, interpreting Los Morteros and the adobe architecture in Los Morteros and the stone architecture in Los Morteros as a product of a small community. You don't need a large community for that. Uh, but the other side are larger, are more complex. And perhaps the population is, is larger then. And, but also there were different groups coming to this area so yeah it is it is still difficult for for us but it's a good question for us and it's an important question for us to understand yeah the archaeology is it challenges so many of the assumptions that um particularly european archaeologists have about that kind of development and all of those things so to do one last question claire dudman asks whether you have any idea what might have happened to the people when the climate changed did they die out or did they migrate oh there i i didn't show some pictures of other other sites in, in other parts of the, the valley but there there are other sites with um, uh, um, plazas and pyramids, pretty much like the Norte Chico in other parts of the Chao Valley. And there are evidence of other like larger, uh, large complex ceremonial sites uh, that probably are uh, contemporary to this area or uh, um, like uh, from a different period. Some of them have ceramics, so probably they are later, from, from a later period. And, but people uh, apparently did not migrate. Uh, they stayed there. They were used in different areas of the, of the valley. And, and, and we found evidence of that, a very different uh, configuration and use of the valley uh, um, from pre-Hispanic times to, to uh, historic times. Um, uh, we, we found evidence of uh, uh, agricultural fields buried in sand in areas that are now abandoned that are, uh, are uh, with uh, wetlands and, and wetland and woody vegetation because this valley during the colonial period was part of this encomienda uh, from the, the valley to the north, the Viru Valley. And then after then was part of some haciendas uh, during the, the, the re Republic, the early times of the Republic were part of the haciendas. And then they, they, they then uh, during that time, there were some few haciendas working there and, and, and like producing, doing, uh, developing uh, agriculture in very specific and very uh, small areas in the valley. And then the whole valley was taken by nature. <laughs> and all this archaeological evidence was hidden. And then you have the, the reform agraria. I don't know how, how you said that. The reform, the, this change, this this uh, social transformation, the political thing in the 70s that changed the, the way we were um, using land. And so there were cooperatives, uh, cooperative uh, that were in charge of the the people that produce the land, like the the, the farmers. And, but they still were using the same system for uh, making agriculture than the haciendas. 
And then for most of the history, the, the, the value wasn't used the way it was used in the pre-Hispanic times. Um, yeah, and, but um, um, going back to the question, <laughs> um, there, there is evidence that people say that the resilience of, of, of humanity and, and the societies is very interesting. And for, for us, we are finding evidence that uh, this social, this, these climatic events that we take uh, now as a catastrophic and destructive, like El Nino, could, uh, could have been different in the past. People adapted better in some cases or n knew better um, how to understand nature in, in these cases. Fantastic. Um, I'll hand over to Matt to uh, thank Anastasia and uh, wrap up the talk. Yeah, thank you. Um, that was, yeah, just brilliant. I was um, just kind of in awe of the landscapes you, you get to dig in. I'm used to digging in wet fields in, in Britain and then you've got these amazing deserts, which must be very challenging, but incredibly beautiful yeah. places. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your talk. Um, it was an absolutely brilliant contribution to our Global Past series. So um, I'm I'm sure the the, um, the audience are are joining me in spirit and in, in clapping. Um, but we have so many nice comments coming in through the chat function. Um, and the final thing for me to do is basically promote our next lecture, which um let me just bring that up now um so the next lecture in our global past series uh is going to be delivered on monday the 6th of december by dr dillis johns and professor jeff Irwin from the university of auckland and they will be talking to us about archaeological canoes in aotearoa in new zealand please forgive my pronunciation um but uh so we'll be going to somewhere much wetter than the Peruvian desert next time. And I hope you'll all uh, join us. And so uh, thank you all for coming. And thank you again to uh, Professor uh, Mauricio for that fantastic lecture. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.